So we start with the fourth lecture by Professor Lee. Thanks. So uh, I will uh, give some ingredients in the proof of this uh, blow-up analysis. So the result says that if we have a solution in a ball of radius 2, and if the supremum in a unit ball goes to infinity. So we would like to have a good description of these uh, solutions. So uh, eventually we want to have such a description on manifolds. So here we so far have it for uh, uh, in Euclidean domain. So, uh, so what it says is there, there is a number of finite number of blow up points, universal distance away, and uh, the heights near each blow up point are all comparable by universal constants. And each blow up profile is like a rescale of the Sobolev extremal function and the closeness is measured in C0 close to this rescaling of the uh, Sobolev extremal function. And uh, so the first statement uh, somehow, uh, this proposition uh, ensures that the blow up profile uh, is the same. Is the same B. <clears throat> and, and it is not known whether or not if a solution, say, has weaker regularity to this entire, if it's C2, it is known. This, this problem, if solution is a classical solution, classification is known. If it's C1 alpha, it is not known. And uh, so I will describe a, a proof of this proposition, so from which one can see also uh, some of the arguments used somehow uh, need to be that so far do not work for this for solving this open problem. So, so to, to start the proof of that, so we first uh, make some simplifications. Uh, so, so first, because our solution is actually superharmonic. So V is superharmonic. So because of the problem, so because of this cone structure. So it is always, we only deal with superharmonic functions. So that will imply by the maximum principle C0 will be positive. And this is for all y greater or equal than 1. So be, this follows from a uh, maximum principle to compare uh, with the harmonic function. This is a harmonic function on the boundary of the unit ball. If you take C0 less than the minimum of V, then we have this inequality. So then we can pass to subsequence. So we may assume without loss of generality by passing to subsequence and by uh, shrinking this 
RK smaller and making this C0 smaller. So we may assume that VK of Y minus V of Y is very, very close to this V. And uh, so this is bigger than So we just make make this R k smaller, but still goes to infinity, and maybe make this C zero a little bit smaller. So we will have this. Uh, we will have this. So then, <coughs> so this is a ball of RK, and we take X sitting here, and uh, we can, we will see that So we will see that when we make a Kelvin transformation, we take a bore as lambda small, and we take VK x lambda. We make a Kelvin transformation. We compare the two solutions outside. We are going to see that this is less or equal than V of Y for Y in BRK minus B lambda of X. So first, if lambda positive is small. This can be seen from the expression of this Kelvin transformation. A Kelvin transformation uh, A Kelvin transformation. So if you make lambda very, very small, and uh, outside here, one can see quite clearly it's going to be very small. So, so there's no problem. And uh, here, it is also OK, because actually this inequality is holds in y minus x less than, for example, any number of a. If you want such an inequality to hold up to a, and if and only if this r to the n minus 2 over 2, this vk, this, if you write in local coordinates, and it, it is monotone. It's the same thing. Just so this is just a rewriting of this inequality. So if you want to this inequality to hold from zero to here to up to a, uh, you, you just need to check the monotonicity of this. This is just an equivalent statement. So so this is certainly monotone because you have a any positive C1 function. This will be positive when r is very small. So there's no problem with this to get started, this procedure. And then, as usual, like in moving plane argument or moving sphere, and uh, here, moving sphere, just the same as moving plane, but using uh, conformal invariance. So sometimes, uh, because there are more spheres in our n. So, so planes, if you look at the stereographic projection, is on Sn. So planes are spheres going through the North Pole. If you use freely all spheres, 
In Rn, you are, you are actually using all spheres on Sn. Sometimes give you advantage. And uh, okay, so then we in, enlarge this. Uh, we enlarge this radius lambda to the optimal. To, to the largest position, that's the lambda k of x. So lambda k of x, k bar of x. So this number is, we keep this inequality, enlarging the radius of the ball until you cannot do that anymore. So that defines a number. And, uh, and then, in, so, Actually, one can prove that this lambda k bar of x is bigger than 1 over c of x positive. And of course, this is, we defined, we have an upper bound. Yeah. So, so the lower bound is actually independent of k. So here, you need to uh, make some estimates on the gradient of this function, which we actually proved such gradient estimates. So, next, uh, so we have a, so we have a sequence of solution VK, it goes to V, on any compact subsets. So we define this the limit of this lambda k bar. We define it as a function of So I actually can prove that this, so first for V, if this, if this is finite, if this is finite, so we know because we have this order uh, for VK, we can pass for, for, for any lambda less than this lambda bar, uh, we can, pass this inequality to the limit. So we know that, so whether or not it's infinity, for any lambda radius less than that, we know that V x lambda, we have this order. Because we can pass this, uh, inequality and the ball goes to infinity. So V lives on the whole space. So so it is actually uh, for this, so before taking the limit, if we look at this VK, So here, here is something we, we cannot, so we cannot really apply a strong maximum principle and Hopf lemma to this V. So that's, that's the main reason we cannot uh, settle that open problem at the beginning. So, so some maximum principle argument on V, we could not perform directly. So we have to, we can only perform on VK, and somehow there's a, a limit process we, we are using. So here, anyway, 
So we are able to prove by kind of a maximum principal argument and half lemma uh, performed on this VK solution. So we know that either this is identically infinity or, or finite. So this we can prove. What do I mean by uh, making uh, maximum principle and half lemma argument? What I mean is like this. So if this is zero, this is a very large bore, radius rk, this is a boundary. So if we have a function, something like uh, vk, so then we take a, a bore somehow and we reflect it. So this is b, let's put it x, b lambda of x. So when we reflect, the function is going to be like, like this. If at the beginning, lambda very small, it goes like this. This is like vk x lambda y. So that's the func function being reflected. You can see the formula from the beginning. If you reflect, it will go like this. Yeah. Then you enlarge the bore. There are some possibilities which make this inequality uh, can be violated, start to be violated. So what can happen clearly is when, for example, when, when this function somehow go like this, touch like this, and go like that. So then for, at some, for in large lambda, you hit it from below and touch inside. So next moment, it can go out. But this is not possible because for VK, for VK, it satisfies an elliptic equation. And this reflection also satisfies the same equation. So then when we take a difference, it's going to, the difference will satisfy a second order elliptic uh, equation if we look at the difference. So uh, this is greater or equal than zero and equal to zero at one point, then one can have the strong maximum principle to say they have to be identically equal to zero. So then they will all the way stick together. So another possibility is near here, at some mo moments, this becomes tangent. So this becomes tangent. So here become tangent. So then two solutions, greater or equal than, then, then, then we assume inside is, is still greater than the arrow. One greater than the other, only here become tangent. If in that case, then it violates the Hopf lemma because inside positive, a Hopf lemma says derivative should be positive, so they should go with different derivative here, cannot become tangent. So therefore, for this, moving sphere process to stop, actually, unless you stick together, for in that case you can, uh, in that case this statement is also true, at the moment when it stops at this lambda k bar, if it is finite, that means on the boundary they hit together. So you always have a boundary touch. So you always boundary will touch. So, so whenever, so the statement is whenever this moving sphere procedure stops at this radius, then this function, when you reflect it, the reflected outside the piece will touch on the boundary on this circle, on this sphere. You will touch it. So that's the only possibility that this procedure can stop. 
So, so this says what you can uh, make use of this stopping radius, so they touch. So then you can argue that after going to limit, then your V, okay, so, so this case is, so, so this case is easy, easier to handle because in this case, last time uh, uh, we once proved that, so, so this case meaning this V will have the property for any sphere, you make a reflection, the reflection will be below V. So namely, um, in that case, by definition, you take any ball, and then you take V, X and lambda, this one will always be below this V of Y, outside. Because that's the meaning of this lambda bar of X is infinity. Because lambda bar of X meaning uh, uh, you will get for any lambda less than that, the reflection stays below. But this, we showed that this will imply, uh, so, so for example, I take any plane on the, uh, in the space, so we can make a balls like that, and we can prove symmetry with respect to this plane. So therefore, this V is symmetric with respect to any plane, therefore V is constant. So in this case, it can be ruled out very quickly. So we only need to worry about this case. So this case occurs when this lambda k is always also uh, finite. So that means for Vk, you always have boundary touch on a ball of Rk, so that you always carry a touching point. And from there, you can argue the limit function actually has this property. The limit function has the property that at infinity, it, so this is the Kelvin transformation value at infinity. That value will touch the value of V at infinity. So the, the, the touching of Vk on the bound, and its Kelvin transformation on the boundary of Rk at a point will translate to this. So it will mean this V will make a Kelvin transformation will touch at infinity. So that means this function V has the following property. So V will be uh, locally Lipschitz because we proved uh, this gradient estimate. Yeah. So, and, uh, and then we know that this V has this property. It's super harmonic. And uh, at, for every X in the space, there is a radius so that the Kelvin transformation is, cannot move anymore. So they stick together at infinity. So, so this means there's a radius outside the, this ball, the Kelvin transformation stay below, but the value of the reflection touches at infinity of this V. So in fact, this statement is enough to deduce that V should be of this form. So, so this, what this V does, 
Uh, so let's recall. Uh, we have a lemma. So the lemma says that. So if we take a, we take a little ball. So suppose we have a function, which is super harmonic. Outside this little ball. And uh, u can be, u is actually for this lemma, u is L, L1 is enough. So uh, L1 minus 0. So, and if we have two functions, let's say C1 and C, so u of y is greater or equal than two functions. And if lin inf u of y is equal to w1 0 and w2 0. Let's say w1, w2 is differentiable at a point. Let's just say c1. So in that case, we must have gradient w1, 0 equal to gradient w2, 0. Yeah. So namely, the picture one draws in one dimension should not happen. So one dimension, you would draw a u like this, which is harmonic outside zero, and this would be w1, and this would be w2. So they can stick together there, but having different gradients. So as, as soon as you go one dimension up, this should not happen. So whenever you are able to make two functions touch there at one point, you know these two functions must have the same gradient there. It's a quite a, uh, so, so the way to use it, uh, which I, ha I have actually used this uh, a number of times, which can give me some results, uh, is to create many such W. So to make them stick at one point, then you will have information that all the gradients should be the same. And uh, often, one can extract some useful information from there. So here, the situation we have created is, <coughs> so it happens at infinity in this case. So, so here, these functions after, so this function is like, so v is like u, and zero is like infinity. So, so this family of functions stay below this function, but they touch, this is the value at infinity, they are the same, they touch the value of v at infinity. So that, it is like we created a lot of w here, and stay below a function, and they touch at infinity, not, not zero, though. Yeah. So, so then, from here, from this lemma, and this v is uh, super harmonic. And uh, from this lemma, one knows that the gradient of this function, the value at infinity, should be the same. So. So for every x, the gradient of this function at infinity will be the same vector. So it's, there's a lot of information buried there. So the infinity is the same as 0 is because we, this is a conformally, this is a conformally invariant. You make a Kelvin transformation, the infinity becomes 0. It falls into this, this lemma. So so this is the lemma, and we apply the lemma with, for w1, w2, we cook up many 
W. So let's call it Wx. So this is the Kelvin transformation of this. So we turned. This is the Kelvin transformation is performed with the unit ball centered at zero, which turn infinity to the origin, and then we can apply this lemma. So that means this function Wx, for every x, this function we take gradient at zero, it should be a fixed vector. It should be a fixed vector. So, well, one can calculate it. It's, it's easy to calculate the gradient of that function at zero. So when you calculate it, you see this function. You see that this is equal to a constant. This alpha is the value of v at infinity. So this is a linear function. This is v of x. This is a gradient v of x. This is a number. So, so this thing should be a constant. It should be a constant. Well, then you rewrite it. We are saying all this gradient should be zero. Now, gradient is zero. That means all this inside should be a constant. So this is a v to some power plus a quadratic polynomial should be zero. So, so then you can just write down what v is. So once you have this expression, and then it should satisfy the equation, so everything is very clear. So it, this v is being classified. So, so after this is being classified, so we, what we want to know is So what we want to know is so if we have a sequence of solutions to this ellipt to this conformally invariant equation in a ball of B2, and if in B1, so the supremum goes to infinity. We want to know uh, what happened to that. Well, one, one situation uh, would be you have a maximum subhaul value blow up like this, or the other is smaller than that, somehow like this picture. So, so then you analyze that first and then put the picker picture together. So in that case, if that's the case, let's say this zero, something like this, so I would rescale our function by dividing it by uk of zero. And the right way to rescale uh, is, so this will keep everything invariant. So this will be in vk of x. So this will make the solution will be in enlarging ball, and the vk uh, will be zero, uh, will be one, and because we are assuming we are in a position that all this other are slower height, so vk will actually be less than one. Somehow. So, so, so this will be a situation to analyze first. So, so then we want to know what happens in this situation. So in all the other situations, one can some, somewhat uh, reduce uh, to there. So, so one would look at a situation, it's this situation. So, so we have a VK, a sequence of solutions, so which is in a bore 
with enlarging radius. So this will be the radius Rk. So this will be Rk goes to infinity. And, uh, and the Vk at 0 is 1, which is the maximum. And we want to know what happens to this solution in a very large enlarging ball. What can one say? Well, in that case, one can prove that so you make you shrink this ball with delta prime, but that's a universal size. So you shrink that, then you know that this VK is close to this U by an epsilon. Yeah. This will be by an epsilon. So first, uh, we know that this VK, like, uh, so now um, we start with the picture. So this is a ball of RK. I draw a picture of capital U. So this is VK. So that will go to U uh, in, in some, uh, yeah, for example. It, so it's lower. So it will converge to that U, capital U. So, but, but that doesn't mean uh, one do not have far away, we have some crazy, things, because in the limit, you, you may, you, they all go. So that one wants to rule out that kind of possibility. So, so first, one shows that uh, the minimum on a ball of radius r will, will not be too high, will not be too high. So, uh, the reason is that if it is very high, this standard solution, U, have some property. So the standard solution, U, is this solution. So when, when one make a transformation for this solution, Kelvin transformation for this function, if, we, if, if lambda is less than one, it's always stay below. If lambda, this ball is bigger than one, it goes up. If lambda is one, they become the same. So this is a, for this standard solution, it has these properties. So, so if this happens, then one can get a contradiction by doing this. You, one can then reflect this mo moving sphere, this procedure will be able to go all the way to lambda bigger than that. So this will, will, will be possible. So because when this reflection we have we have C0 control of Vk to U inside. So we're making a Kelvin transformation outside. C0 is under control. So, so, so that will rule out the boundary touching. So one can go all the way. So then after sending k to infinity, U will, this moving sphere procedure will be performed for you all the way up to one plus epsilon square. So this violates the picture of this function capital U. 
So, so this shows that this VK, we want to prove that this VK is very close to U. So first, we prove that for any radius BR, so the minimum on this boundary cannot be too high. So at least there's one point which is not very high. And, uh, and then, so then this VK, then this VK can be bigger than this, one minus epsilon of that. This comes from the fact that this VK is super harmonic. So we can somehow, one can compare using super harmonicity to compare this. So we have a lower bound. So to rule out this, so this comes from super harmonicity. To rule out that VK cannot go too high, so one can estimate uh, the energy, which is small. So I think I'm running. I'll just, so one, one will have energy very small. So, so one will control that for fixed point on to outside, the energy is small. So for this equation, if one control the energy, then one can control L infinity norm. So it's like small energy imply regularity arguments because when small energy, if there's no bound, then when we scale that, one will lead to an entire solution, but there's a Liouville theorem, then the energy will be too big. So, so that's the kind of small energy implied regularity argument. And uh, then this lemma, then one can show that this VK will be upper bounded by this U. So, so we first show that the minimum on each sphere will not be too high compared to the standard profile. So this one shows the upper is also bounded by the sublift function profile. And uh, so this argument, so, so this is actually uses uh, our local gradient estimates to achieve this. So next, one wants to show that everything will be within one plus two epsilon of the standard program. So, so we know that the minimum cannot be the minimum cannot be cannot be too high. So we know the maximum cannot be we know this cannot be like CUR. So this we proved. But it's possible that we want to rule out that the maximum is, say, we want to rule out the maximum is actually bigger than 1 plus 2 epsilon UR. So, so then there will be an oscillation somehow. So this is smaller than that, the maximum is higher. So on this ball of radius r on the boundary, one will get oscillation. So one wants to rule out that picture. So the picture to be ruled out is we have a ball very, very large, BR. So here, there's one point which is a 
let's call it somewhere here, let's call it a zk and zk hat. So this function vk and zk hat, this is bit smaller than 1 plus epsilon u zk, but on the other one, we have a bigger than 1 plus 2 epsilon. So there is an oscillation on this sphere. So that's the picture to be ruled out. But in that case, uh, we, we have an upper bound. So, so we will have estimates. So when we, uh, when we make a rescale, we call this VK hat defined like this. We know this is bounded, so we prove some. We prove this is bounded. So the VK is bounded, and it satisfies equation. The right hand side will go to zero. So we we have proved estimates for that. So then this VK hat will have a limit called V star. So this V star will be a solution which we discussed before. This V star will satisfy will satisfy this in this is satisfy the degenerate equation we looked at before. But this the convergence is at least zero. So we have a convergence and uh, this picture will transform to V K hat this surface will become B1 because we did a rescaling. So that means for VK hat on the unit bore boundary, you have one point which is bigger than 1 plus epsilon, while the other one will be smaller than that. So this is the, so VK hat will have this oscillation, but the limit is a radial function. So we prove that the limit function should be radial. So this should imply V hat star radio. But then this is a contradiction. It is not, it is not possible because the, yeah. So uh, after this, so then the, the rest, one can put uh, things together uh, using previous estimates. So I think I will stop here.